today we're going to get into games that have been unreleased and a few of the reasons why they were not released. And we're going to start out with me giving you two primary examples of games that I love and how they were mashed up into a game when that was never released. Here's Fantasy Zone arcade game by Sega and this game was released on the Sega 3D Classics collection on 3DS recently and it's a phenomenal game. They did a, a really really good port of the arcade technology. And they added a, several bonus features to make the game even better than the arcade version. It's a shmup game. The general idea is to clear out all the motherships, gain currency, go to shops. You can buy armaments, weapons, and such. It has some really, really unique bosses. This is a game that works quite well with Turbo Fire, but of course you can get Turbo Fire weapons when you go to the shops. But this is Fantasy Zone, the arcade version. I own this on Sega Master System and I really loved the game at the time. And this is one game that they did an unlicensed version of for NES and the, the unlicensed version of this on NES was pretty pitiful. So you want to stick with a very, very colorful Sega Master System version as an alternative. Now I'm going to show you the other game that's a, a favorite of mine that was also on the Sega Classics 3D collection. Space Harrier. And when I get into the reason why some of these games were not released, it's something that you would never really think of unless it's pointed out to you, but it's right in front of your eyes, you just don't realize it until I tell you what it is. This is another game that I had on Sega Master System and it was phenomenal, and of course the version on NES was pitiful, just like Fantasy Zone, just how it is. And I'm not sure how many of you actually ever had a Sega Master System, but they, they had a predominant amount of colors on there that really made a lot of the games look way better than their NES counterparts, but games in general were not as good as NES games, but there was definitely a market for quite a few arcade-style games on Sega Master System, some good RPGs, etc. It was definitely a system that stood on its own and it still stands the test of time. So anyways, that was a Space Harrier and Fantasy Zone, and both of these games were combined and mashed up into a Turbo Graphics CD game that was never released, called Space Fantasy Zone. And I have two versions I did. I ripped the full version and compressed it at 117 megabytes, and I ripped it and removed the unnecessary audio and compressed it at 499 kilobytes. So, you want to play a game temporarily and get the full experience, we got the 117 megabyte version. And for long term, if it's a game that you really, really want to keep playing, such as Dracula X Rondo of Blood, the RIP version would work really well in that context. So we're going to play Space Fantasy Zone, which is a mashup. And there's something that you would have seen in the Space Area video, but you're not going to know what it is until I point it out to you, that is not... You know completely present in this game and this is one of the reasons why this game was never released to the home market configuration gotta love the english so we got the space harrier style gameplay with the fantasy zone skin and we have the shops everything but what you may not notice is that the scaling technology used for this is not quite as good as the arcade counterpart for Space Area. I mean, everything's just jumping at you haphazardly at a really weird perspective. So scaling is one reason why many games do not really get true home ports. And I'm going to show you examples of where certain home ports deal with this and other ones attempt to deal with this. So you can see that objects are literally just jumping in at me, almost like you're filming a video, pausing it, moving an object a few feet, and then, you know, continuing to film. So it has a slightly disconcerting jarring effect. And like always, I do not edit my videos. If I flub a few words here and there, I just leave them intact because I'm not a fan of videos that are edited a thousand times over. I just like to go with the flow and let things go as they are, but... We're going to go to a home port of Thunderblade for the Sega Master System 
And this is a game that uses extensive scaling technology for the arcade version, but obviously for the home version, it's not as doable. So I'm going to show you what the Sega Master System version did with it. As of right now, we have no scaling whatsoever. They literally just removed the scaling from the arcade version. You have kind of like the Space Fantasy Zone effect once you get to the 3D part of this, but I'm not going to show you it in this version of it. I'm going to show you it in the other version. This was also released on the PC Engine, but only in Japan. And they attempted to do the scaling technology, but they failed miserably. I mean, the game's still fun to play, even with the weird scaling technology that they attempt to do kind of like a fake scaling technique and you know how like on uh, Super Nintendo we have mode 7 which is somewhat a equivalent to what they're trying to do with the scaling it's their own form of zooming in and out and it worked pretty well on Super Nintendo they did a good job with it but here we have the PC Engine version and notice how this jarring Everything is here, the way they try doing the scaling effect. It just does not work quite well. And it gets pretty wacky once you get to the actual 3D ver uh, version of it. Because if you played Thunderblade before, you'd realize that the first part of each stage is overhead. And the second part of each stage tends to be 3D. And I'm going to show you this with the actual arcade version, which was... Surprisingly, ironically enough, also ported to the 3DS Classics Collection. So we're going to show you the awesome, awesome arcade version of it. And this only runs on MAME 2010 or Final Burn Alpha 2012. And this is the arcade version of it. Arcade Thunderblade. And the ROM set is actually the same, so you could change the command line to FBA or MAME 2010, and it works on both. I mean, many, many games work out this way. But look how amazing the scaling is. It's just phenomenal. And I'm going to go right into the 3D stage so you can see the whole thing. I mean, look, it's beautiful. They did a great job. They have the technology perfectly intact there and this is the arcade version and up until it released on the Sega, you know the Sega 3D classics as far as the 3DS this has never been done for a home version I mean we've never had this true scaling technology for the arcade version of Thunderblade we had the fairly lackluster versions of Thunderblade on Sega Master System and on PC Engine but they were still fun to play in their own right but I'm loving this 3D scaling, it, it's awesome, everything's perfect. And Nintendo did a great job with that Mode 7 technology, I mean, that's the closest we've had. If you've ever played games like Road Rash, when you go around corners, you notice that they disguise their scaling with a, kind of a popping effect. They'd have the side of a building kind of just obscure what you're seeing. It's, if you play Ridge Racer on PlayStation 1, you'll see this too, but you tend to go around corners when they need to pop in buildings from the distance see again the scaling is looking quite good but look in the background how some buildings are just popping in out of nowhere that would be a pop-in effect and that's what playstation one and other concurrent systems kind of did with the turning around the you know corners and such to obscure that weird effect but you're mostly paying attention to the foreground so you don't really notice that but if you really pay attention to the background you'll see objects just popping right in and I'm sucking at this game right now <laughs> but yeah this is Thunderblade the arcade version and it works pretty damn good just a, a slightly slower frame rate and very very minor sound skipping issues on Final Burn Alpha 2012 and Main 2010 it runs better on Final Burn Alpha 2012 but here you go Thunderblade arcade version I'm gonna give you another example of the scaling done in another arcade port we have uh, Power Drift, which was released in the arcade, and it was also released on the PC Engine.
And that's the one thing I love about the PC Engine, especially the Japanese version of it. There are many, many arcade games on it. I mean, it's worth playing for the arcade games alone. It's a shame that we never had the attention to the USA market that we had for the Japanese market. We had a very small catalog of games, considering. But again, we have the scale in here, and they did a decent job of trying to replicate the arcade version here. It's not too bad. It's definitely playable. But as soon as I load up the arcade version, you're going to see a difference. And in this case, the arcade version doesn't run as well on the Mini and the NES. It runs somewhat slow, but it's still there if you want to play it. So we're going to go to the arcade version of Power Drift. Now I'm running this through Final Burn Alpha 2012. And the scaling is phenomenal in this. They did a great job. I'm loving it. And I can almost guarantee that the Mode 7 technology definitely took the took a look at the architecture for Sega games in the arcade with the scaling technology to help them get ahead on games like Pilot Wings and such. I mean. If you play games like Outrun, they also use the scaling technology. They did a pretty damn good job at this, I mean, for the time, for how old this game is. But scaling technology was a big thing back then, and the home market really didn't realize the intricacies and complexities of what was involved to get it to home. I mean, Super Nintendo was truly the first system to pull it off with games like Pilot Wings and especially act razor when you go to the you know the ground and you see that epic incidental music playing as you rotate in mode 7 fashion to the ground it was phenomenal now as the last part of this video i'm going to show you the really really crappy port of space harrier that came out on the nes just to show you the differential between the arcade space harrier and the nes as far as scaling is concerned So here we have NES Space Area. And the scaling is just awful. Objects are jumping in from the background to the foreground and it's not seamless whatsoever. This is just God awful. It's a terrible example. Sound effects are bad, the music's bad, the gameplay's bad. This is a game to laugh at. And surprisingly, the Sega Master System version of this is quite good in comparison. And they did put this on uh, TurboGrafx 16, and they did a pretty damn good job of that as well. But of course, not everybody had the luxury of being able to afford a TurboGrafx-16. It was quite an expensive system at the time. But this is quite a deal better than the NES version, and it's... Obviously the scale is not as good, but it's still... Decent in comparison to the arcade version. But I had a lot of fun playing this. The music's better. It had a pretty good FM sound chip. Lastly, we're going to do the PC Engine version of Space Area. They didn't do too bad of a job here. I mean, skill is not quite there, but it's even better than the Sega Master System version. The music is more crisp. Sound effects are even crystal clear. So if I were going to play a home version of this, I would definitely pick the TurboGrafx-16 version, then the Sega Master System version, and last case scenario, the Nintendo version. But now that I have my 3DS with my Sega 3D Classics collection, I'm definitely going to be playing it on that instead. But hope you enjoyed the video, and watch part two to get more into unreleased NES games.